Hi, today I'd like to continue my series on industrial gas turbine combustors. In this episode, I'd like to talk about thermoacoustics. Each video in this series will be built upon the information discussed before, so to understand all of the concepts I will discuss, it will be important to watch the full series. For this reason, I've included a link to part one in the description below. As I've discussed in earlier videos, thermoacoustics is one of the most challenging problems facing premix combustion and gas turbine combustors. So what is thermoacoustics? The word thermoacoustic is derived from two words, thermo, which relates to temperature and density, and acoustic, which relates to sound. Essentially, thermoacoustic problems in gas turbine combustors occurs when sound waves generated by the flame resonate at specific frequencies so that the power of the sound created at those frequencies rises to a very large level these waves will then interact with components in the combustor, causing them to vibrate. If the energy is strong enough, over time, this can lead to cracks developing in larger components and can cause metal seals to shatter. These sound waves are mainly produced by temporal oscillations in the amount of heat released by the flame. If these sound waves themselves can drive the instability which is causing the oscillations in heat release, then it is possible for resonance to occur. The easiest way to explain this in, in simple terms is with an example that most people will have experience with. Consider a microphone, amplifier, and speaker. Most environments have lo some low ambient levels of noise, which cover a wide range of frequencies. This ambient sound is picked up by the microphone amplified and fed to the speaker, which then radiates the sound back into the environment. The microphone picks up the sound coming from the speaker in addition to the ambient sound and feeds this back through the amplifier to the speaker again. If the sound, which came originally from the speaker, has the same phase for any frequency when it reaches the speaker again, it causes the sound signal at those frequencies to add on top of the original signal, increasing the power or volume produced by the speaker at those specific frequencies. To demonstrate what I mean by this, I'm showing two waves of the same magnitude at the same frequency. When the two waves are in phase, the peaks and troughs of both waves are aligned. Adding these two waves together produces a wave with the same frequency, but with double the magnitude. On the other side, if the two waves are completely out of phase, then adding the two waves cancels both waves out, eliminating the signal. And this is how active noise cancellation works. Thus, if the two waves are in phase, then the power or volume of the sound coming from the speaker at those frequencies increases. This new stronger volume is picked up by the microphone and fed back to the speaker again, increasing the power and volume of the sound at those frequencies even more. Theoretically, this process continues until infinity, but losses in the, in the system limit the maximum sound level which can be achieved. This phenomena is commonly known as microphone feedback and is that characteristic squeal one sometimes hears from such a configuration. One way to fix this is to change the distance between the microphone and the speaker so that the specific frequencies which are resonating are no longer in phase. This same phenomena occurs inside a gas turbine combustor. The speaker is the flame, and the microphone is the instability which drives the fluctuations in heat release of the flame. Premixed flames are more susceptible to this than diffusion flames because the fuel and air are mixed before the flame. The ratio of fuel to air determines the amount of heat which is released. 
at lean equivalence ratios typical of premix gas turbine combustors adding more fuel will increase the amount of heat released while reducing the amount of fuel will decrease the amount of heat released thus any instability which causes temporal fluctuations in the fuel to air ratio will cause premix flames to produce sound there are a number of well-known instabilities which can cause this, but as the relevance of these instabilities varies depending on the frequency of the sound being produced, I will leave this for future videos where we will focus on the different frequency regimes. However, in this video, I want to discuss one more aspect which is important regarding the frequencies which can be excited within the gas turbine combustor. To explain this, I want to give another simple example, which most of you again will be familiar with. Consider a beam of a specific length, which is held fixed at either end. One can cause this beam to vibrate by applying a cyclical force at some location along the beam. This beam can only vibrate at specific frequencies, which depend on its length, and several other parameters related to its shape and material properties. The lowest of these frequencies, also known as the first mode, is where the entire beam between its two ends is vibrating up and down. The second mode, or next highest frequency, is that where there is an inflection point or node in the center of the beam and either half of the beam are vibrating out of phase with each other. The third mode contains two nodes and so on, such that the nth mode contains n minus one nodes. So the number of nodes increases as the frequency increases. As you can see, the beam doesn't move at the nodes. If you try to drive the oscillations at this specific frequency at one of those nodes, you will not be able to cause the beam to vibrate at that specific frequency. A gas turbine combustor is similar to this beam. The beam is the gas contained within the combustor volume, and the oscillations are the oscillations in pressure of that gas, or in other words, the acoustic waves. These waves are somewhat constrained at the outlet and inlet of the combustor due to the high gas velocities there, which approach the speed of sound. Typically, as a first approximation, it is assumed that the acoustic waves are fully constrained at the combustor inlet and outlet, similar to the constraints at either end of the beam example. I should emphasize this is done as a first approximation. More advanced methods consider more realistic boundary conditions for the inlet and outlet of the combustor. But very often this simplified approach is very effective for explaining and solving thermoacoustic problems. Now the three-dimensional gas within the combustor volume is somewhat more complicated than the two-dimensional beam, but the principle is the same. Due to its volume, only certain discrete acoustic frequencies are possible to be excited. To show the highly complex nature of the acoustic oscillations in a typical gas turbine combustor, here is a picture taken from the modal analysis of a single burner test rig. The image is a plane cut through the center of the burner and shows the results for a high frequency. The nodes at this frequency are shown in blue, and the other colors show the location of the peaks and troughs of the acoustic wave at this frequency. The modal analysis takes into account the volume of the gas, as we have discussed, but also takes into account the material properties of the gas, which change with species concentration and temperature. So the location of the flame will also have a strong impact on the discrete acoustic frequencies which can be produced and the modal shape of the resulting pressure waves at those frequencies. Okay, so we have introduced thermoacoustics in gas turbine combustors, the general mechanism for how they occur, and the constraints on which frequencies are possible to be excited. In the next two videos, I want to focus on two frequency domains which commonly produce thermoacoustic problems in premix gas turbine combustors. 
This will not be a comprehensive review, but we'll discuss the most common mechanisms which drive thermoacoustics or combustor dynamics in these two ranges and common strategies to mitigate these problems. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did and you would like to see more videos like this, please hit the like button and please subscribe to the channel. Also, if you have other ideas for future videos, please put them in the comments. Due to work, I'm not able to produce videos on a regular basis, but when I have free time, I will try to get to all the topics suggested. Thanks.